G'day guys, today is the day. So we have finished Eliza's four weeks of training. Um, 90 minutes a week tops, probably closer to 75 minutes a week by the time we finish it all. So that was three sessions a week, all doing high intensity interval training, really high quality stuff um, based on their training zone. So today we're doing a VO2 max test. Last time we got to 44.6. And we got 30 seconds into 12 k's an hour, which is five minute pace. So, fingers crossed, we will beat that today. How are you feeling, Lies? So, Lies is just starting off here, a minute 30 in. As you see there, heart rate's 115. Last time it was 124. So, she's already looking, you know, eight beats lower. So, that's really good. So, nice cruisy pace to start off with. And we'll see we go. Lies is cruising along at seven and a half, so eight k's an hour it is. Her heart rate is 12 beats lower than last time. So, feeling all right, Lies? Going up to 10.5 k's an hour. Lies' heart rate is a massive 18 beats lower. Phenomenal. Lily, what's actually happening to her heart over the last four weeks of training? Is it due to endurance training, we get uh, an increased volume and size of the left ventricle, which is obviously where the, the uh, blood's being ejected out from. We also get a lot of hypertrophy of the heart, so thickening of the heart walls, so we can actually push blood out quicker. So the combination of those two, the increased size and the, the musculature of the heart being able to push that quicker, that's more blood per beat, we can drop down the heart rate at the same speed, so that's a very good adaptation we've got. Do this last 10. Do this 10 and we'll see. Come on. That's the way. Good work, boss. Come on. Five seconds. Five seconds, your call. Here we go. Two seconds, your call. Good work. You got it. You got it. Good stuff. We're at 51.5. That's good. 51.5. Just finish up this last last 25 seconds. Come on. Heart rate's good. Only 184. Still lower. Good work. 15 seconds, you got it, 15, last 15, you got it, last 15. Here we go, ready, five seconds, five seconds, four. five seconds, you're done. Two, five, go up. Here we go, 13. 15 seconds. 15. Go, go, you got it. Come on, good work, come on. I'll tell you when it's 15. That's 15, give me one more, one more, one more, one more, last one, that's the way. That's the way, good lives, good, come on. Awesome, huge improvements. Give me five seconds, five seconds. Two seconds, you'll call, thumbs up. Done. All right, guys, the moment of truth. So this is where we will see how much Eliza improved, if she improved at all. So let's have a look at the data. On the left here, we have today's data, which is the post-testing data, so four weeks after her training. And on the right, we have her pre-testing data. You can see the dates here, uh, the 4th of January, 2017, and the 6th of February, 2017. So what's that, 32 days in between, no less, because it's February. So yeah, perfect, right on the month. So. A um, couple of things to look at here. First of all, we'll go straight into it and look at VO2 max. So today we got 52.1, whereas her pre-testing value was 44.6. So we have actually increased her VO2 max by a whopping 16.8% in just four weeks of training. You'll see today she uh, reached her VO2 max at a heart rate of 182 at uh, a speed of 12 k's an hour, which is five minute pace. So um, you see that we did get a good minute and a half past that, but obviously her VO2 plateaued, which is quite normal, um, which was the same in the pre-testing where she um, reached it at 11 k's an hour. So she's up to VO2 max value by um, a whole kilometer and up, uh, one kilometer per hour, which is pretty significant in four weeks. You'll see that last time her heart rate was 188 at VO2 max, this time it was 182. Uh, she peaked at 185 today, whereas 190 last time. So that's quite a normal adaptation. What that's just saying is her heart's gotten bigger uh, and more efficient. And, and I'm gonna show you some, some data to, to support that in a sec. So uh, there's three aspects to VO2 max. There's our 
our lungs, our, our respiratory system, um, so how good they are, how much air we can actually breathe in, how much oxygen we can breathe in. There is the heart and the cardiovascular system, so how much that can um, actually, how much blood and oxygen that can pump around, and obviously the muscular adaptation, so how much of that oxygen we can take in and use. So if we have a look firstly at her ventilation, which is the respiratory adaptation, you'll see that today she got right up pretty high up here, what's that, 100 and... 107 litres of ventilation at her peak, whereas last time she only got to 94. So lungs don't really change in size, but what this is telling me is that because she was used to doing, you know, sub-maximal intensity exercise, and now she's doing quite high intensity um, interval training, she's become more adept at pushing through the pain, basically. So her, lactic, her lactate threshold is, would have pushed up, um, and as a result, she can actually withstand higher intensities for longer. So that's why she could breathe in more air uh, from there. Interesting graph here, fraction of expired oxygen. So this is basically showing us how much oxygen the muscles take out of the circulating blood. So the lower being the better. At rest, we have 21% that we breathe in. Um, and at rest, we breathe out 17%, which means that we use up 4%. So if we did no activity whatsoever and just st stood on the treadmill, the line would be flatlined across here. When we start to exercise, we know that our heart rate increases, we know that our breathing rate increases, well, our oxygen extraction also increases as well. So today, we're sitting around the 16% to 16.5% early on, and of course, by the end, we get back to resting because you breathe in the air, but you can't take the oxygen out because we're, we're at our peak. But you're yeah, looking at 16.5% here, whereas from the pre-testing, we're sitting closer to the 17% mark throughout most of it. So that's a, a half a percent down, which in the scheme of things, given there's only 21% in, um, that's actually uh, an 11.2% increase in Eliza's oxygen extraction capacity in just four weeks. So that's really good muscular adaptation there. Let's move on to the heart adaptations. This here is showing us how many millilitres of oxygen that Eliza's heart is beating out per beat. So it's pretty much stroke volume. So stroke volume is um, basically to do with the size of the heart, how much blood you can eject each beat. We know that we can't change max heart rate very much. You know, 220 minus your age is, is very generic, but that, that's sort of a, a guide there. We're never going to get it up to 300 beats a minute. It's not possible. Um, but what we can do is increase the size of the heart. So then our cardiac output, which is stroke volume, so how much blood we're beating per minute times by our heart rate, um, that determines how much blood we're circulating and therefore oxygen. So if we can increase the size of our heart, then that's obviously going to be very good. So here today, you can see that we're up to about 16 mils of oxygen per beat, and it gradually comes down here, which is fine. Whereas last time, it was at 12 mils. Once got up to 14 mils, but you know that's that's a, that's a big difference. That's a 33% difference in how much oxygen Eliza is beating per beat. So that, that's a massive improvement. And that's why we saw that heart rate go down. We saw that she peaked at what well, her VO2 max was a heart rate of 182 today, whereas it was 188 last time. Um, so that's, that's an awesome adaptation there. Her heart's gotten bigger, um, her muscles are extracting more oxygen, and she can withstand higher intensity, so she can actually breathe in more air. I just want to do some comparisons, because the test details were exactly the same, so we started at the same intensity, um, everything was identical. So I just want to pull out some random values. Let's have a look at, say, five minutes in here. Oz's heart rate's 135 uh, today. Whereas at five minutes last time, her heart rate was 152. So what's that? That's a, a 17, 17 beats lower after four weeks. Another random value, let's pick out nine minutes here. 162 today. Last time it was 180. So that's 18 beats per minute. So that is a pretty phenomenal change in just four weeks of training. So going back to the question, you know, how fit can you get in... Uh, just four weeks of high intensity interval training, you know, VO2 max up by 16.8%, stroke volume up by 33%, muscles extracting 11.25% more oxygen. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty phenomenal, pretty phenomenal. And I don't know what a lactate threshold is. I haven't checked that yet. Uh, I'll put it in, I'll put it in below what it is, but I can tell you it's going to be higher, um, but I'll put down the specifics. When I, when I calculate it. But yeah, very successful so far. So we're going to do the 2K time trial still. 
um, and you know, obviously to make sure that this is all great on paper, but we want this to correlate to performance, so we still want to smash the 2K time trial. So we'll stay tuned for that and see how it goes.